just as uh, the circumstances on the ground changed dramatically after Hamas's brutal mass murder rampage on the 7th of October. Our posture and our security posture to that reason has got understandably to be enhanced. This is not me making any implications about his constituents' family. For goodness sake, Minister, have some political nous. There's millions of people in Britain want you to do something. This you can do with a stroke of a pen and it won't cost you anything in your popularity stakes with Netanyahu in Tel Aviv. The attendance at this uh, session today is evidence of the massive support there is in the country for the plight of the Palestinian people to be at least palliated by our government and it could be done so, so inexpensively I literally cannot fathom why the minister is going to rise and resist the demands made by the Honourable Lady, the member for Lancaster. The Philadelphia corridor is completely sealed and this is the fourth day in a row where exactly no, none, food or medical aid has entered Gaza. Right, so a uh, Workers' Party MP George Calloway was furious yesterday. He spoke for more than six minutes in support of a similar visa scheme for Gazans wanting to leave Gaza right now, that the scheme that this government had launched for people trying to flee Ukraine a few years ago, if you remember that. Uh, when the Ukraine war started, the Britain had gone overboard, not just kind of allowing uh, Ukrainians to come and uh, stay here, but also helping families financially who wanted to play host to those Ukrainian refugees. In contrast, when you compare that to what how the government has reacted in response to the genocide being committed by Israel in Gaza as shambolic. On the 14th of April last month, an MP asked a pointed question to Home Secretary James Cleverly about one of his constituents who was desperate to get his parents out, a British Palestinian wanting to get his parents out of Gaza in the wake of this genocide being committed by Israel. This is the shameful reply that we received from James Cleverly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, my constituent, Maisara, is a British citizen and his parents live in Gaza. His parents successfully applied for visas to visit him in autumn last year, but they were unable to travel after October the 7th and their visas expired. I contacted the Home Office on Maisara's behalf to ask if these visas could be extended, and I was told they would have to make new applications. There are, however, of course, no functioning visa application centres in Gaza. So can the minister explain what exactly my constituents' parents should do? Home Secretary. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm more than happy to look at the details of the case. Of course, he has to understand that just as uh, the circumstances on the ground changed dramatically after Hamas's brutal mass murder rampage on the 7th of October. Our posture and our security posture to that reason has got understandably to be enhanced. This is not me making any implications about his constituents' family, but he and the House will understand that we must be careful in everything we do when it comes to accepting uh, uh, people who are leaving Gaza in these circumstances. Now, you can't expect anything better from James Cleverly because he has literally been the face of the British support for genocide. I mean, there's this guy shames humanity, but that's where we are. So keep that in mind. There was a fresh debate yesterday in response to an e-petition. There was an e-petition asking for government to launch a similar visa scheme for Gazans that it had launched for people trying to leave Ukraine. Now, as is the norm that any e-petition that attracts more than 100,000 signatures, the government ought to have a parliamentary debate. That is why this debate took place yesterday in the Westminster Hall of the Parliament. Many MPs spoke, cutting across the party lines. There was almost unanimity that government should roll out a similar visa scheme. But then the most 
powerful and most compelling argument came from George Calloway, who spoke for the longest. Here's what he said. Mr. Vickers, I'm going to leave aside the fact that this is all entirely hypothetical at this point because Israel has seized the Rafah crossing in absolute breach of the Camp David Accords, which have the power of international law having been adopted by the Security Council. Uh, the Philadelphia corridor is completely sealed, and this is the fourth day in a row where exactly no, none, food or medical aid has entered Gaza. And therefore, even if the British government moved their uh, show to the border, no Palestinian would be able to get biometric tests anyway. I congratulate the Honourable Member for Lancaster in securing this debate and commiserate with the Minister who's going to have to try and answer the literally unanswerable, to defend the literally indefensible. Sometimes one detests a government policy but can understand why they're doing it. It is impossible to fathom why the government is resisting the entirely inexpensive demand that this debate, this petition, uh, is asking for hundreds, 391 of these signatories are my constituents in Rochdale who are always looking for ways to demonstrate their support for the Palestinian cause. As you'll know, uh, Mr. Vickers, and I declare the interest that one of my parliamentary staff is one of those trying to get their family out of Gaza to no avail. The attendance at this uh, session today is evidence of the massive support there is in the country for the plight of the Palestinian people to be at least palliated by our government, and it could be done so, so inexpensively, I literally cannot fathom why the minister is going to rise and resist the demands made by the Honourable Lady, the member for Lancaster. <laughs> Leaving aside all the historical reasons why they should, the fact that it was in this very building that the entire Palestinian tragedy was authored. When, on behalf of one people, our government promised to a second people the land that belonged to a third people. You would have thought that that would have been a matter of historical guilt for our government, that they might want to in some way mitigate, leaving aside the fact that hundreds of our soldiers, police officers, civil servants, staff of this very house were murdered in the King David Hotel. Our soldiers left hanging by piano wire in the orange groves of Jaffa, booby-trapped. Shouldn't the government have a scintilla of guilt, responsibility, for what has happened to the Palestinian people in the past and in the last seven months? It isn't true that our military aid to Israel is minuscule. If you define it by completed pieces of ordinance may be, but our components are in. Most of Israel's bombs and rockets that are falling down on these poor people in Gaza, defenseless prisoners in what the Prime Minister then, David Cameron, now the Foreign Secretary, described as the largest open-air prison in the world. And he went on to say, it must not be allowed to remain so. That was in 2010. Now he's the Foreign Secretary in 2024. He turns his face away from the people in that prison camp that he said must not be allowed to remain so. And it isn't just ordinance. We have flown 
200 missions from our sovereign base in Akrotiri in Cyprus. Who knew that we have a sovereign base in independent Cyprus, a European Union country, an allied country, but we have the right to fly whatever we like out of that sovereign base. And 200 times we have flown spy missions over Gaza for the edification of Netanyahu and his gang in power in Tel Aviv. So our contribution to this massacre is very significant, both historically and contemporaneously. And what we're asking here, people from all sides, some of them actually, literally, capital F, friends of Israel, but they're all here asking for one small thing, that you at least allow people who are citizens here, who are contributing here, to get their old mother out of Gaza, rather than actually see her, perhaps, on their telephone, being torn to shreds by a bomb that wouldn't have been as effective if it weren't for the components being given from British factories and targets being assisted by RAF jets flying out of Akrotiri. For goodness sake, Minister, have some political nous. There's millions of people in Britain want you to do something. This you can do with a stroke of a pen and it won't cost you anything in your popularity stakes with Netanyahu in Tel Aviv. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so because that's one of the many ways you can support independent journalism. God bless you all.